Bristol Community College, Mathematics with Dan Avedikian, Math 131, Elements of College Mathematics, Section 2.2, Problem 36. This is Section 2.2, Problem 36. It says solve the matrix, and our matrix has 1, 1, negative 1, 6 in the top row, 2, negative 1, positive 1, negative 9 in the middle row, and the bottom row is 1, negative 2, positive 3, positive 1. So to solve a matrix like this, the first thing you want to do, step one, is get a one in the upper leftmost position, which we already have just by luck. So we move right on to step two. Step two says the other values in that first column besides the one must get turned into zeros. So I'll set up my next matrix. The top row can stay the way it is. One, one, negative one, six. Now, to zero the 2 that's in that position, I'm going to make an equation that will begin with row 2, and I will have row 2 equals some stuff plus the old row 2. I'm starting row 2 because that's the row we're making the 0. I end in row 2 because the equation should begin and end with the same row, row 2, row 2. Now, what I initially call stuff is the row with the 1 in the same column that I'm making the 0. Notice there are two ones in the same column. I chose row 1. How come? Well. If I use the row 3 in the bottom, the 1 in row 3, I could still zero that. But the way you're supposed to do it is use the 1 that's going to be part of your final answer as the 1 to go along those diagonals. So it's better to use row 1. So that's part of my stuff. The row 1 gets multiplied times the number I'm zeroing, so times 2, but opposite sign, so times negative 2. So my equation is row 2 equals negative 2 times row 1 plus the old row 2. So when I multiply negative 2 times row 1, I'm going to make a negative 2, and I'm going to add to row 2. Negative 2, positive 2, 0. Next position, negative 2 times row 1. Negative 2 times 1, I make a negative 2 again. This time when I add it to row 2, though, negative 2 plus negative 1. Negative 2 plus negative 1 is negative 3. Next position, negative 2 times row 1 is negative 2 times negative 1. Pay attention to the signs. The negatives are going to cancel. I'm going to make a positive 2 when I multiply. Take that positive 2, add it to row 2. So positive 2 plus positive 1 is 3. Positive 3. And finally, the last column. I'm going to have negative 2 times row 1 is negative 2 times 6. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. Take that result to add to row 2, because that's what the equation says to do. So I have negative 12 plus negative 9. Negative 12, negative 9 is negative 21. So there's one of my zeros. I zeroed the 2, and it did change the rest of the row. Now I'll go down to the next row. In the first column right now, I have a 1. I have to make it become a 0. So I'm in row 3. So I have an equation that begins in row 3, because that's the row I'm making the 0. So I'll have row 3 equals some stuff plus the old row 3. The, if the equation begins in row 3, it must end in row 3. It must begin and end in the same row. The stuff, as I call it, is the row with the 1, which is, again is row 1 at this step. And it must be multiplied times the number I'm zeroing, but opposite sign. So I'm zeroing a positive 1, so my equation has a negative 1. So my equation is the new row 3 equals negative 1 times row 1 plus the old row 3. So as I multiply negative 1 times row 1, I'm going to make a negative 1. Add to row 3. Negative 1, positive 1, 0. Next column, negative 1 times row 1 is negative 1 times 1. So again, I, I make a negative 1. But this time when I add to row 3, I add negative 1, negative 2. Negative 1, negative 2 is negative 3. Next position. Negative 1 times row 1 is negative 1 times negative 1. This time, again, pay attention to the signs. The negatives cancel, become a positive. So when I multiply, I get a positive 1. Add that result to row 3. Positive 1 plus positive 3 is 4. Positive 4. And finally, in the last position, negative 1 times row 1 is negative 1 times 6. That will give me a negative 6 as a result. Add that result to row 3. Negative 6 and positive 1. Negative 6 and positive 1 is negative 5. So step two is complete. Step two was to zero out the other values in that first column, and I got them, the zeros. Now, step three, the negative three in the middle row of the second column has to become a one. Now, notice there is a one that lines up with it, but I can't swap. 
because it will undo some of my work in the first column. I don't want to rearrange the 1 and the 0 in the first column. Um, if it was a 1 in row 3, I could swap. I would be swapping the zeros, which would be OK. But notice they're all evenly divisible by 3. So if I multiply row 2 through by 1 over this value, by 1 over negative 3, all my fractions will reduce back to whole numbers, which will make it OK. So to do that, let me set up my next matrix. And that negative 3 in row 2, column 2, has to become a 1. So I'm going to leave the top row as is in this step. So it'll stay 1, 1, negative 1, 6. Let me leave a little space for the middle row. I'll put the bottom row in now because that's not going to change either. 0, negative 3, 4, negative 5. Be careful as you copy it. You don't want to lose any of your negatives. And now to make a 1 in the middle row where I need it, I will make an equation that will be row 2 equals 1 over the number that's becoming a 1. So 1 over negative 3 times the entire row. So my new row 2 equals 1 over negative 3 times the old row 2. Now as I do that, 1 over negative 3 times 0. Well, time, anything times 0 just stays 0, which is good. Next, 1 over negative 3 times negative 3. That will give me negative 3 over negative 3. The negatives cancel, the 3's cancel, everything cancels, and I get 1. Next, 1 over negative 3 times 3. Well, this time the 3's cancel, but you do keep the negative. You have a positive over a negative, so it's negative 1. And finally, the last position, 1 over negative 3 times negative 21. So I have negative 21 over negative 3. The negatives cancel, and the 21 over 3 reduces to 7. And because the negatives cancel, it's a positive 7. So step three is complete. I wanted a one in that second row, second column, and I got it. It's a one. So I go on to step four. Step four is the other values in column two, the one in the top row and the negative three in the bottom row, must get zeroed out. So I'm going to make a similar equation and make them become zeros. So set up my next matrix. And in row 1, I'm going to make a 0. So next to row 1, I make an equation that will begin with row 1. My equation must begin with the row where I'm making the 0. That will equal some stuff plus the old row 1. My equation begins in row 1, must end in row 1. The stuff is the row with the 1 in the same column, which at this step is in row 2. And it will be multiplied times the number I'm zeroing, so also times 1 but opposite sign. My matrix has a positive one that I'm going to zero out. My equation must have a negative one. So my equation is the new row 1 equals negative 1 times row 2 plus the old row 1. So let's do that math. So negative 1 times row 2. Negative 1 times 0, which is 0. Add to row 1, so 0 plus 1 is 1. Next, negative 1 times row 2. It's negative 1 times positive 1. I make a negative 1. Add to row 1. Negative 1, positive 1. Negative 1, positive 1. 0, which is what I wanted. Next, negative 1 times row 2 is negative 1 times negative 1. Watch the negatives. They will cancel. You get a positive 1. Add that to row 1. Positive 1 plus negative 1. Positive 1 plus negative 1 is 0. And finally, the last column, negative 1 times row 2 is negative 1 times 7. That'll make a negative 7. Add that to row 1. Negative 7 and positive 6. Negative 7, positive 6 is minus 1. So there's one of my zeros. The middle row can stay. I don't want to change the one that's in that second column. So 0, 1, negative 1, 7 stays just the way it is. No change for now. But in the bottom row, I do want to zero the negative 3. So I will make an equation. It will start with row 3 because that's the row I want to make the zero in row 3. My equation will be row 3 equals some stuff plus the old row 3. If my equation begins in row 3, it must end in row 3. The stuff, as I call it, is the row with the 1 in the same column, which is row 2. That's part of my stuff. And that row gets multiplied times the number I'm zeroing out, but opposite sign. So I'm zeroing a negative 3, so my equation has a positive 3. So the equation is the new row 3 equals positive 3 times row 2 plus the old row 3. So again, now let's do that math. So 3 times row 2, first column is 3 times 0. You get a result of 0, add that result to row 3. 0 plus 0, 0. Next column, 3 times row 2 is 3 times 1. It's going to give you a 3. 
add that result to row 3. So positive 3 plus negative 3. Positive 3 plus negative 3 is 0. Next, I'm going to do 3 times row 2 is 3 times negative 1. So I'm going to get a negative 3. Add negative 3 to row 3. So negative 3 positive 4 is 1. That's going to be handy. And the last position, 3 times row 2 is 3 times 7, which is 21. Add that result to row 3. So 21 and negative 5. 21 negative 5 is 16. So that completes step 4, which is zeroing out the other values in column 2, which I've got. So step 5 is you want to go to the third position over in the bottom row and turn it into a 1. Well, if you look, it just turned into a 1 by itself, which is good. That's why I said that will be handy. I don't have to do any work. Usually I'd have some work to do to make that a 1. So the final step, step 6, is zero out the other values of that third column. One of them is already a 0. So the last thing I need to do is zero out the minus 1 that's in row 2, and I should have the final solution. So I'll set up one more matrix. And again, usually I have to do some work to make the value in that third position of the top row into a zero. It, it just turned into a zero by itself by good luck, so I'll just keep the top row the way it is. One, zero, zero, negative one. That can stay. Now, row 2 has a minus 1 in a position that needs to become a 0. So I'm going to make an equation. That equation will start with row 2 because that's the row where I want to make the 0. My 0 needs to show up in row 2, so therefore my equation starts with row 2. The equation will be row 2 equals some stuff plus the old row 2. If my equation begins in row 2, it must end in the same row, so it ends in row 2. The stuff in the middle that I leave a blank spot initially for is the row with a 1 in row 3. So my equation has row 3. And that row 3 gets multiplied times the number I'm zeroing, but opposite signs. So I'm zeroing a minus 1, so my equation has a positive 1. So my equation is the new row 2 equals 1 times row 3 plus the old row 2. So the times 1, I'm really doing row 3 plus row 2. So first column, row 3 plus row 2. Row 3 plus row 2 is 0 plus 0. 0. Next column, row 3 plus row 2 is 0 plus 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. Next column, row 3 plus row 2. Row 3 plus row 2, 1 plus negative 1. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. Finally, last column, row 3 plus row 2. Row 3 is 16 plus row 2 is 7, both positive. So 16 plus 7, positive 23. And then row 3 is good the way it is. 0, 0, 1, 16. So now I'm done. I have all the 1s and zeros where they need to be. So my solution is the top row says x is equal to negative 1. The middle row says that y is equal to positive 23. And the bottom row says that z equals 16, positive 16. And that's it.